confirming that you can see the correct screen? <laughs> yes. All right. So Justin, I'm, I know that you're going to talk about this. So I'm not sure if you're on mute. If you do want to keep running or you want me to start off. Um, no, I can uh, talk about this quickly. And um, so uh, in Saranac Lake, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, jurisdictions and um, we're lucky that the village has uh, several volunteer committees such as the Parks and Trails Advisory Board, Arts and Culture, uh, and Downtown Advisory Board, as well as the Community Development Office. And, um, you know, I think it's really important that um, in order to put forth the best cohesive message that we all continue to uh, work together and you know share information um and then uh you know for quarterly seasonal planning meetings um, we're going to be doing those and the goal of those is to identify priorities um you know roost doesn't we don't want our own priorities we want the community's priorities um and so you know i'm, I'm always available feel free to reach out at any time um and uh if you have ideas for you know, stories or blogs or photos, um, you know, or, or things that you think that should be highlighted, please, you know, don't hesitate to get in touch. Okay, thank you, Justin. Thank you. So we're gonna to start today off by going over um, some of the key high level priority art projects that have been identified in the marketing plan and that we've been working on. And then we will start to um, review some of the things for summer so that we can start to identify priorities. So when we meet for our next quarterly meeting, we can kind of review the whole, the, in more detail, um, what we've come up with for summer and then start working on fall. I'm on the wrong show. So currently, and I'll let J Justin talk about the rebuild of sarnaclake.com because that is one of our biggest projects that we're working on right now. An exciting one as well. Unless, <laughs> unless it's getting noisy there, so I don't mind. I don't mind taking over, Justin. Um, yeah, my daughter is very, very much enjoying her yogurt. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we are currently doing a rebuild, a complete rebuild of SaranacLake.com. Um, we have a community committee, volunteer committee. It's about, got about thirty members um, from a wide range of, you know, the Saranac Lake community. Uh, late last year, we started doing that. Um, and we've had, uh, well, we're going to have our third meeting, uh, next week. And, um, it, so far it's been really great. Uh, we just saw the, uh, full color design, which will be going over in the meeting next week. Um, it looks great. It's uh, very mobile friendly. It's visual heavy. Um, and it highlights a lot of what's special about Saranac Lake, especially the, uh, you know, the locals and, and what life in Saranac Lake is. Um, we're shooting for a June wow. launch. <laughs> and um, <laughs> she's very excited about it. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm really happy about is the uh, improved accessibility features that are built into this website. So our designers have gone through and made sure that, um, you know, the color contrasts are good for people with visual disabilities. Uh, the pages will be easily readable by automatic page readers. Um, and we're going to be adding uh, information on local businesses and events to uh, show what's what's accessible for people um, with, you know, various disabilities. Um, so I think this is, uh, you know, this is a, a really big project and um, it's coming together. Awesome. It looks really nice. I think it's also been really great, like having that committee for this website and, and the feedback that we've had along the way so far has really helped, you know, at each stage, we're, we're seeing that really helped impact the, the product. Thank you. So in 2021, we'll also be um, continuing to put emphasis on um, our Love Your ADK campaign. And the goal of this campaign, this, this program, and it's a partnership between Roost, um, the New York State DEC, the Adirondack Council, and the Adirondack Mountain Club um, to help it, 
to help um, increase awareness and, and provide education on the best practices for Leave No Trace. Um, Roost is a partner for the Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics um, and who is also a, a great partner in providing us with resources. Um, we've launched in April of 2020, we launched the loveyouradk.org um, with, the, with the pledge and we're continuing to work with our partners to um, develop, you know, specific content that's based around, um, you know, the issues that we see a rise right now. Our, our programming is focused on tips for um, how to be prepared in the backcountry during the winter. Um, we focus on, you know, providing um, content on alternative hikes or, um, you know, it doesn't just stop with hiking, um, creating materials as well regarding like when you're out in the waterways, whether it's paddling or fishing, you know, working together to create um, information and getting that to the traveler um, before they leave their house um, and, and head to the Adirondacks. So that will continue to be a major priority in 2021. Um, you know, one thing that really we implemented for the first time in 2020 was um, a really cool email strategy where if anyone went to any of our websites um, in, our, in our email list and engage with any hiking information, we could send them um, tips and recommended hikes um, to help disperse hikers to different areas. So that will be something we'll continue to, to work with our partners on um, and help disseminate important information. Michelle, how many um, have taken the pledge so far? I can't remember, it's over a thousand, isn't it? I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it's over a thousand. And you know, and again, the, the pledge is is great in getting people to to make that pledge. But the, the ultimate goal is to you know keep t at multiple touch points, get you know reminding people that you know making sure that they're prepared before they become the Adirondacks to go hiking and spend time um, in the backcountry. So the number one priority isn't so much the pledge, but it's about um, really focusing on creating top of mind awareness on, on what people need to know so they are prepared. Excellent. Okay. And then I'm using the wrong screen. <laughs> there we go. Um, you know, so I touched on one way, way that we've gotten much more targeted in our emails in 2020 um, with regard to that example with um, the Love Your ADK campaign. This program is also rolling over into Saranac Lake specific emails. So in addition to the Adirondacks USA, which is the weekly email that we send out that includes um, a different story from different regions in the Adirondacks and, and has a little bit of something for everyone in it on a weekly basis, we're also getting much more targeted with very specific emails from Saranac Lake. And we're doing that in a variety of different ways. Um, one example is that now when people sign up, for an email on saranaclake.com, either you know requesting more information or sign, signing up for um, to enter to win the, the quarterly contest, um, they would will immediately get a welcome email that comes from Saranac Lake that has great information that's seasonally relevant, um, information on how to get there, things that you should know before you go um, and arrive, and that includes like, e even information we weave in some of that um, leave no trace information into that email. But what's really cool, and I, now that Glenn and Jason are both on this, so they know I'm going to butcher it because I know <laughs> when I start talking about all the technical logistics, um, I know where my area of expertise is, and it's not on the exact logistics on how it works. But our, our email system has now, our email list has now been segmented over a number of years based on interest. Some of it comes from when people um, first sign up for the email, they'll select their interest preference. Um, the email, the program also, um, has a learning capability so they know what type of content you if you are opening the emails what you're clicking on so that'll also help segment um based on interest and so now we can send if somebody is interested in you know cross-country skiing and outdoor winter sports for saranac lake we can send targeted emails from saranac lake about the topics they're interested in or if someone's interested more in arts or or family activities or um hiking or you know shopping and dining you know, we can we're, we can now, as opposed to just getting an email, you know, about everything in the Adirondacks, that's a little bit of everything for everyone. We're getting much more targeted with those emails so we can send, you know, a paddler, a paddling email about, you know, five epic, you know, paddle trips to take in the Saranac Lake region um, that comes straight underneath the Saranac Lake brand that they signed up under. 
So we're continuing to develop that program and make it much more robust um, and you know, continue to build, use email to build relationships with our travelers. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is a remarketing email based on behavior. So the, the, the one here on, on the screen, this is License to Chill, um, that actually, if anyone visits um, sarnaclake.com and is in our email, um, email list and has already signed up, um, we know that they've been back to, to the website. So, you know, on, on Tuesday, I go to, to the website and I'm clicking around or, you know, saw it on social media, however I got there. Um, we now can remarket them. Um, and about two days later, they receive an email from us that um, really highlights those winter priorities that we identified and, and discussed together when we met in um, late September, early October. So that email is, is seeing a, a very nice open rate. Um, and that's something that we're looking and, and tracking on how that performs and we'll implement as we go into spring and summer, um, you know, utilizing that remarketing behavior. So, you know, people are already engaging in the website and they're there. So while they're still, you know, thinking about it, let, let's touch them one more time. Again, wrong screen. So in October of 2020, um, we announced our partnership with Travel Unity. And Travel Unity is a not-for-profit that is focused on promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in the travel, um, travel field. Um, they have been a great partner and a resource. And so, um, you know, there, there are experts in that not-for-profit on a variety of different topics. Um, so, you know, it's, it's great to have that network that we can reach out to with questions um, and they can provide different educational pieces. So that we'll be focusing on three primary categories, um, working with Travel Unity, um, management and workforce. So for example, um, you know, they, they're helping with providing um, a series of educational um, seminars um, for the entire Roost team. Um, and for once we go, as we go through those, we can help um, disperse different pieces um, to our marketing partners and our community partners um, throughout the region. So it's creating that, that connection there. Um, we've done, they've done a um, climate assessment with our, with our team um, and a variety of other pieces. So that's, you know, really exciting to have this network of different, different players to work with um, as we navigate through this. Um, and then from there, we'll work on visitorship and community impact. You know, the, the goal is to create um, you know, a welcoming Adirondacks that's, uh, that's welcoming for travelers and as well as um, potential future residents as well. So at this moment, one of the cool projects that we're really excited to be working on is, in, and Justin touched on it a little bit in the website piece, is that accessibility um, audit that we're working on. So right now we are, um, you know, take, really taking a hard look in an inventory of all of the different attractions and different amenities um, within, within the region um, that are accessible. So we can make sure to review that content on our website, create um, itineraries um, and pages um, that really talks about accessible tourism and, and helps um, individuals find the information they're looking for. So that is something that we're working on um, pretty diligently um, in order to roll some, some, some new pieces out um, for the spring of 2021. That's one example of the type of type of work that we're working on with our partnership with Travel Unity. So a few other you know high level notes of interest, um, and the next slide we'll actually talk about Adirondack Wayfinder a little bit farther. But um, we've we've created a much more robust Adirondack Wayfinder, and to just refresh on that, Adirondack Wayfinder is a website that we built that create you can create thematic like road trip itineraries um, that link together um, multiple points of interest and is really customizable. Um, so if somebody's interested in, for example, an arts trail, we can create arts trails. And once, you know, somebody's looking at that arts trail, if they go, oh, this would be great, but I'd love to, you know, stop and eat or maybe take a short hike while I'm out on this trail, they can add additional features onto that um, that's, that's curated. They can modify that trail, you know, oh, I don't have all day, so I'm gonna have to, you know, I wanna go to make sure I hit these 
particular art galleries, for example, and then they can, um, you know, one of the really um, more dynamic pieces of the relaunch of Adirondack Wayfinder is that they can, you know, enter their starting address, hit start, and it'll push it right to Google Maps. So if they're on their phone, um, they can sync it with their car navigation system. So I'll show an example of that shortly. Um, you know, we're really excited about the Adirondack Rail Trail and, and watching that develop, develop as work is starting to take place there. Um, Roost is represented on the Adirondack Rail Trail Stakeholder Committee. Um, and so we're really looking to position Saranac Lake to really um, welcome that new, um, new resource amenity as well. So that, that's really exciting and we'll continue to um, share details as we have more there. You know, just a reminder that we, you know, Roost is available for um, help with design support and placemaking. And we've, you know, got a variety of examples of work that we have done in the past and look forward to, you know, continuing to provide that support in 2021. You know, right now, um, with regard to hosting travel writers, um, we're definitely starting to see an uptick in travel writers being interested in, in returning to um, doing familiarization tours and writing more pieces. So that's something um, that we are really looking to work with um, different attractions and amenities and um, lodging properties. Um, and so that's something, if you're ever interested in, in hosting a travel writer, um, you know, make sure to reach out to Justin and share that information. And, you know, we will work to see, um, the, find the right travel writer for the right fit there. I'm gonna hand it over to Mary Jane for one quick second, just to talk about the North Elba um, Local Enhancement and Advancement Fund. Hi everybody, um, this is MJ. So in um, January of 2020, uh, Essex County passed the increase from three to 5% for the um, Community Tourism Enhancement Fund. And that was from 3% to 5%. The additional 2% goes into a separate fund for um, community enhancement projects. The fund is available for non-for-profit government and public entities. Um, so that is for the, uh, County of Essex. The North Elba created the LEAF Fund, which is a local enhancement and advancement fund. There is a committee that makes up, um, we have a committee, a LEAF committee, and applications are now being accepted uh, through March 1 for um, grants to be given out, in, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think, uh, in April. So the way that the process works is any non-for-profit, public or government in North Elba can apply for one of these grants. The committee reviews the grants and then the final approval is in front of the North Elba Town Board. So um, there's all of the information is on roostadk.com backslash leaf and you're also welcome to reach out to um, myself or anybody else on the committee for any additional um, questions or um, direction that you may need. And this is a very beginning of this process, this grant process. Obviously, it's new to the county as well as to uh, the town of North Elba. And we know that there's going to be um, a process of fine tuning and enhancing this um, funding process, but we're really, really excited about it. We think that there's going to be a lot of positive impact for the town of North Elba, and obviously that's part of Saranac Lake as well. So more exciting news and efforts to um, come on the behalf of the LEAF program. Um, I think that's it, Michelle, if you want to. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So you know, some of the other things, you know, throughout the year as we create different materials, whether it's for Love Your 80K or um, Shop 80K, which we launched initially for the holiday shopping season, but we'll have additional materials coming out that will be used um, through different times of the year. We've created business resources that we continue to post on roostadk.com forward slash toolkit. And that is our resource toolkit. Um, we, in, in the follow-up email, we'll include links to that. Um, but that's where you can find like the Politely Adirondack posters, um, you know, information signage, 
um, such as the one that's featured here. That's you know just safety tips for ice fishing. We have snowmobile information. Um, there's also links to um, an image library for Saranac Lake. So if you're looking for professional images to use for marketing purposes and et cetera, those are in there. Um, if the particular images that you're looking for um, are not in the um, public library, feel free to reach out to Justin to request, you know, if there's something that you are looking for that's much more specific. Just a, you know, a reminder that that, that toolkit, we continue, we continue to update and add additional resources to as we um, develop materials throughout the year. So now, we're, now it's time to dig, um, dive a little bit into, you know, our thoughts and, and have that discussion regarding um, spring and summer um, priority development. And I know Justin is popping in and I'm switching on the wrong screen. Um, actually, first I just want to give one example as I, I'm again on the wrong screen. Um, here's, when I talked about Adirondack Wayfinder, here's an example of an Adirondack Wayfinder trail and the way that it can link together communities based on a theme topic. Um, this is a trail that um, we've been featuring this month for Black History Month um, that highlight, ties together both story content and different um, points of interest um, with regard to black history in the Adirondacks. So these are the types of trails that we can build, you know, whether it's around art or history or um, outdoor recreation or, you know, towards, you know, whether it's for family or, you know, solo adventurers, we can continue to build um, out these types of itineraries that can really help with inspiration, but can also be used for navigation as well. So as we look towards spring and summer of 2021, um, we, you know, we definitely learned, you know, right now as we continue to navigate um, through some of the challenges that arose through 2020, we did see in, in, during the warmer months, the things that were really driving people to travel. Um, so those, you know, definitely the outdoor activities, that fresh air, open spaces, um, the, the unique outdoor art installations that were being created, um, you know, creating that storyline of, of, you know, downtown Saranac Lake and, you know, that fresh wide open market that's unique and decidedly different, um, you know, what downtown and, and throughout the Saranac Lake region talking about the unique and rich amenities um, from lodging properties to um, the increase in dining opportunities, um, attractions, etc. So highlighting those. And then really looking, and this is where Justin said that communication and collaboration and the key of that in the beginning. And, you know, we do work with, with um, right of the community groups, but it's also really important from a business standpoint to, you know, if there are new developments at, at your business, it, it could be something um, as, you know, small as, you know, just expanding some outdoor dining or, you know, increasing your hours of operation, or there is, you know, a major a major new development, making sure that you share that information with us so that we can um, include that in our, in our, you know, story content, you know, update the website, um, have that available because we are constantly, um, you know, sending out information to, um, you know, PR companies and um, other travel writers on those new developments because that's what people are, they're always looking for that hook of what's new. So, you know, no matter the size, if, if there is something new that, that's happening with your business or you know of somebody that happens to be doing some sort of upgrade to their business or expansion or relocation, anything along those lines, you know, we'd love to see you help um, to make sure that that information gets channeled through Justin so we can make sure to include that in all of those efforts. Um, you know, continuing people are looking, you know, 2020 and, 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 and research that we're looking at right now for 2021 is, you know, that road trip idea concept is still very um, near and dear to people and that's what they're looking for. So, you know, continuing to make Saranac Lake a destination um, for, for road trips. So that will we'll be using a variety of tools and, and, and mechanism for that, including Adirondack Wayfinder, but also um, story content, you know, making, um, video content and other pieces to make Cernak Lake that road trip destination and a great hub for hub point for also making that your base camp and exploring other areas of the Adirondacks. 
And so we'll also continue to be, you know, we in March of 2020, we added um, a travel advisory update to the top of CernicLake.com. It's included in all of our emails and other, um, you know, any kind of messaging that we do have is that know before you go. And that important information on expectations for people when they are visiting our communities. That will continue to be a major priority and a major cornerstone of our marketing and our efforts. And the other piece to that is, is you know, is we've expanded beyond just the, um, you know, the health recommended um, recommendations of face masks and social distancing, et cetera. That's where it also has important information about making sure you um, make your reservations for attractions prior to visiting and information on what to pack and, and leave no trace information um, and connecting people to the right information there. So that's something we'll continue to, to build out and make more, more robust and we foresee um, staying as part of the website um, for, for very much the indefinite future for now. So we thought it would be a good time to look at, you know, some of the content we talked about last summer, and then that can, that'll be the, the end of the presentation and we can open it up for discussion and um, really help identify those priorities for 2021. And I just jumped to another screen, so I'm hoping that it followed me along. Sometimes it just stays in one window. Yeah. Um, so here we are in the summer, focusing on the summer landing page, and we, you know, really focused on three primary pieces. Um, we, and, and Justin, you're back. <laughs> um, you know, on the land, on the water, and on the town were the things that we talked about. Um, that's where we talked about, you know, road cycling and mountain biking and hiking um, for, for land activities and linked out to story content on that on the water with paddling and boating, um, fishing, et cetera. And then tied everything back to, to the lively town of Cernic Lake and that downtown. So the cultural amenities, um, you know, arts and history um, and, and focused on those, those pieces. So that's where, you know, again, this was really much focused on outdoor, fresh air um, and experiences people could have in 2020. And these are kind of the cornerstones that we'll look for for 2021 and, you know, look towards seeing if there are additional pieces and components that we should add in and really look to focus on featuring. And this is where we can open it up to start that conversation. I'm actually going to end the screen share so we can kind of see one another for a little bit. And I can always pop to any of these particular slides again, um, should we want to dive deeper into any of them. We made Colleen famous eating noodles there, just so everybody knows, on one of her, on the <laughs> summer pages. Does anybody have any questions? I said her video isn't working, Mish. Oh, her video. I thought you meant our video. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, Colleen. Um, did anybody want to offer any input, suggestions, directions, any questions? That's either good or bad. <laughs> oh, Cassandra? What about golf? Michelle, what about golf? Yeah, so go golf is also um, something that we do focus on and, and develop story content for golf as well. Um, and, you know, leveraging how to run a Wayfinder and our email system. So, um, is that this Jim? Yes. Yeah, so that's also, um, when I spoke about email as well, so that's also something we've over years segmented our, our email audience. Um, on people that are interested in golf. So leveraging um, email to speak about golf in the Adirondacks, um, uh, leveraging you know, road trip itineraries to show that connection. And we often know that people will come up on those on um, golfing trips and, and like to hit up you know, a couple of different courses. So showing, showing that connection as well. Um, developing, you know, leveraging social media, um, and other stories. 
um, to help disseminate that information. I, mean, I thought you were. I thought you were skiing. I was, but they closed all the lifts. Oh, because of the wind. Bummer. Yeah, just the space lift is open. The line is really long. Oh, bummer. Cassandra, did you have something? Yeah, um, I guess primarily speaking to Justin, but just keep harping on the Sixer Challenge in Saranac Lake. I think that's really important content and it definitely drives people to come visit here explicitly for that. So I guess just keep cycling in new material for Sixers. Yes, I know this year that we've worked on, we've, you know, um, our photographer, videographer has gone out and a variety of new um, media assets that we can use to continue to promote the Sixer. Um, anybody else have any questions that we can answer? Or suggestions or directions or concerns? So we have our next uh, SaranacLake.com uh, rebuild committee meeting next, is it Thursday, Justin? Uh, yeah, sorry, I misspoke earlier. It is uh, Thursday this week, not next week. So I apologize for that. Jamie's um, is just asking to continue to combine the leave no trace when promoting outdoor activities, especially the Sixer. Absolutely. And that's one thing, again, also, we encourage others to help, you know, amplify that message as well. Um, so that we do have um, part of the Love Your, our Love Your ADK campaign, um, also on that toolkit link that I spoke to earlier, that um, there is the ability to, um, there are resources there for businesses. There's web graphics that they can add to their website, um, social media graphics and other information that they can, uh, that everyone can use to help amplify that message. 